Power Talk. No it's problem. An absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, I've known you for a long time, mm-hmm. but recently reconnected and seeing some of the amazing things you're doing. Do you want to just introduce yourself? Yeah. Tell us what you're about, uh, what you do, how you impact impacting the world. Um, so yeah, my name is Ibrahim, and I'm co-founder and editor-in-chief of a platform called Guap. Um, Guap started as a magazine, but not any just magazine. It's the world's first video magazine. And what that means is we use augmented reality to bring our print to life. So instead of having like written interviews, we have like video interviews and you can like scan the pages of the print and then the video is played to you. And then, yeah, we just cover emerging talent in music, fashion, arts, business, just young creatives, young entrepreneurs, putting them on one platform. And I guess now we're just expanding into building different platforms under the one brand. Wow, so that just sounds something like nothing that I've ever seen (laughs) or heard about. How did the idea come up? Kind of by accident. We kind of said we was going to make a video magazine because we was going to make... I keep When I'm saying we, I'm talking about myself and my business partner. We said we was going to make a video magazine because we was going to create video articles. So instead of having written articles, create video articles and put them into an interactive PDF and send it to like people through a newsletter. That was the initial concept. But then I went to a networking event and I spoke to someone and they told me about augmented reality. And then I went and researched. What is that? Because that... it's like, it's like VR, all that. So like, you see like Snapchat filters and stuff, that's AR. So like mixing the physical world with the digital world, that's AR. Okay. Um, so even things like Google Maps, knowing where you are and how you move, that's all AR. Okay. So we use AR every day, you just don't know about it. So yeah, we said we was gonna make video articles, met that person, and then when I researched and saw that other magazines had used it for adverts, but none had used it for the content. So then we was like, we're already creating video articles. This will just be a way of having a video magazine. And then we just found out how to like make AR and then just done it. So how long have you been going for? Four years now. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, four years. No, that's amazing. And one of the things what, so like we recently reconnected Mm -hmm. and bumped into each other um, is it a mayor's event, yeah, wasn't it? Mayor of London event. The Black History Month event. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And I see this guy, I'm like, I recognise him. <laughs> and then I was like, nah, it cannot be Ibrahim who I used to like, effectively mentor when, yeah. I was, when I was a lot younger and you were a lot younger. Primary school. Primary man. school stuff. And so the pride where I was like, wow, just to see um, this young kid turned into mm. a young man, entrepreneur, doing incredible work. And I was hearing about your platform and your magazine for a while. I just didn't mm. connect, connect the, the dots. The yeah. dots. Um, so obviously, the whole thing about Power to Fight is that we're trying to uh, create uh, workshops, mm-hmm. uh, engaging with different people, bringing people together to try and empower communities to mm-hmm. end youth violence and different resources. So for me, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you, you being a young man, 25? <laughs> yeah, 25. It's yeah. just like, well, okay, here's someone who I know grew up in South East London. Mm-hmm. Um, stereotypically, you have like the press only really painting black people mm-hmm. in a particular way. And when we're talking about youth violence, we see the headlines mm-hmm. it tends to be typically black kids mm-hmm. with hoodies or whatever it is. But here's somebody who's completely broken the mould. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to kind of just get a little bit of an understanding of your journey. How did you avoid all this stuff? And then not make any, come to any assumptions that you were engaged in this stuff. But I just think it's a story knowing where you've got to mm-hmm. um, and a narrative that we need to hear. So, you know, what type of stuff did you see growing up? Did you engage with any of this stuff? Did you, how did you manage to avoid it? What was your kind of um, upbringing like? Engaging in what, but by the way? So what I would say is that basically what we've seen and some of the young people I've worked with, even mm-hmm. if you're not engaging in criminality, yeah. it's around you. Yeah, 100%. Them. And therefore, it can be, for some people, mm-hmm. complicated to avoid. Okay. Even if you're not in the mix, it's what I call this dominant youth culture, which is... Yes. So I think, yeah, it's for part of youth culture. What well, if you're from around these areas? It's like just things that happen kind of thing. So 
I don't really think about it too much yeah. or think. Obviously, it's bad or it's good, but it, I mean, it's not good. But it's like, yeah, it's part of the culture that we grew up with. Right. Um, so, in regards to avoiding it, I think, like, just learning to think for yourself, kind of thing, is yeah. probably how I learned how to yeah. avoid anything. So, like, trying to find myself more than trying to follow what's meant to be or what what we're meant to do kind of thing. But that was like, obviously, we can see the fruit of that. Mm -hmm. Did you have any particular things in place? Like, you know, was it a par your parents were encouraging? Mm -hmm. or was it older siblings? Or was it kind of, you know, you had a peer group or group of friends who were like, nah, we're not going anywhere near that. This is, what was it which kind of kept you so focused that you were now in this position to develop this, this incredible platform that you've got? I don't know. I feel like I've always... See, that's a lot. There's been, there was obviously times where you want to be following because that's what's cool, et cetera, et cetera. But I think when I got into like college and university as well, especially university, I was away from London. Right. So Where did you go? Kent, okay. University of Kent. So being there, I was alone a lot of the time. So I had a lot of time to think and think who I am and yeah. the stuff I'm into without other outside influences. Yeah. Um, my dad's into business, my mum does her own thing, so I guess they probably had somewhat of an influence. Yeah. Um, but I think in college I started reading a lot more, yep. so that took me into a world that I weren't seeing yeah. around me. Um, yeah, so I think it's a factor, I couldn't pinpoint what, yeah. but I'm sure there's like a few factors that yeah. changed yeah. my direction or changed what what I was meant to be, I guess. Yeah, yeah. and that's good because, you know, you mentioned your parents and you mentioned... Yeah. What did you study at uni? Accounting and finance. Okay, mm. so you can see how that's linked yeah, yeah, to yeah, what, yeah, you, yeah, what yeah, you're yeah, kind yeah. of doing Accounting and finance, yeah. What, so we do see, and obviously you're younger, so you're closer to maybe some of the ages <laughs> of young people who stereotypically get involved in this stuff <laughs> or at least what the press kind of say. Um, how bad do you think it is out there? Like, are we really dealing with an issue around youth violence which has become like this epidemic? Or do you think, you know, it's a percentage, it's not anywhere near as mm. it's been hyped up? Or do we, you know, do you, do you sense the fear when you deal with other young people? Do you, do you see it as a, a real issue? Or, I don't know, just your opinion on that, really? Um, if I'm honest, my opinion is, one, that there's a problem with violence on the whole. Like, it's not just youth. Like, there's just certain stories that get shown. Um, two, yeah, like, this has always, like I said, this has always been happening. And I'm sure violence amongst youth has always been happening. We're probably just in a time now where things can be recorded and you can have photos, et cetera, et cetera. But, it's, it's been happening for a long time, man. and so I can't tell whether it's got, gotten worse or any yeah. better because, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's just... Yeah. It's just and, and that is a fair point. Like, I think when we put things into sections, mm. youth violence, like, we don't talk about elderly violence. Yeah, like, like, it's like violence, full yeah, stuff. Like, I think war is violence. Like, well, this is it. So it's like, we're yeah. having more. We might, someone might say we're having more war, yeah. like, but we're not gonna... We publicise war as if it's a good thing. It's, but then we don't publicise when people are fighting yeah. as a good thing. I suppose what we don't do is take a step back and yeah. like, well, I always say that violence is never the cause, it's the consequence of something bigger. We never really tend to go mm. around there. So what I'm noticing, so as an older guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm seeing stuff with your generation, which I didn't see with my generation, mm -hmm. in terms of if you've got a voice, if you've got like a lane, whether that's being a young creative, we see so many kind of, especially people of colour now, authors um, in ways, I'm not saying there hasn't been black authors before, but it seems to be no, this... No, a revolution, this, yeah. Something's <laughs> happening where if I've got an idea of your young creative <laughs> of colour in particular, <laughs> like, the avenues are just open. Is that something you've noticed? Is it something which you think is opening more when you first got into this four years ago? Was it, was there, like, barriers? I'm just... Um, no, there weren't no b barriers. I think... The, on, the reason why there's a difference between probably your generation and our generation is because of the internet. 
Right. So let's say now we're getting fed so much information and now we have access to so much knowledge. So we're not just looking at our peers around us for inspiration. Like we can find inspiration from someone from the other side of the world or have access to them through like Twitter or something. So we're being influenced by so much stuff and seeing that if I want to do this, there's someone else that can, that's done it before so I can follow their path. And like the internet's like reduced the barrier to entry. So if you have an idea and you don't make it happen, it's entirely up to you right. why it hasn't happened yeah. now because like there's no excuse because anything you want to learn most things you want to find out is on the internet. Right. So that's why it's probably easier and that's why probably a lot more people of colour are taking steps. And especially because they didn't see... A lot of people start things because they haven't seen what they wanted here. Right. So they're making it. And because now you can have access to bare different communities, they're building their own communities from the things they're making. So, yeah. yeah. And, I, and you're, I, I'm seeing how not just your generation, but even for, for us, where collaboration and partnership is so mm. key, it just it feels easier. It just feels so much easier just to be able to say, oh, okay, I'm, I'm seeing what you're doing over there. Yeah. How about we kind of do something together? Mm-hmm. And that just builds um, strength. Uh, are you, you know, we spoke about, I've men- mentored you mm-hmm. when you were a kid. How important do you see even you at 25 mentoring others and mm-hmm. do you see a lot of young people coming through into this type of stuff you're doing? Yeah, I think I think I subconsciously mentor because yeah, if someone comes to me and they ask me for advice, I'll give them advice. But I think even through my journey and through the stuff I put out, there's been a lot of people that have messaged me like, oh yeah, I really needed that or that was like good advice, etc, etc, etc. So I think by me just putting out my stuff is mentoring and how important I think it is. Yeah, I think it's important because, like you said, it's kind of important to see people from our areas or from similar backgrounds to us doing things that you might want to do because it makes you feel like it's real. So I think it's important that I carry on showing my journey and not even my journey when I've made it, like showing my journey while I'm on it and just being authentic and showing people the real life into what I'm doing and mentoring them through that. And that's something I do notice, like following you Mm. on Twitter and Instagram and stuff, it's like you show a lot of Mm. of your life. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not just all business orientated, like you're showing just how, and I think that is a good thing to show people the reality of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, Now the government and local central government, city hall, mayor, press, everyone's like, we've got this issue around knife crime Mm -hmm. and and whatnot. So just from your perspective, because a lot of people will say, ah, it's drill. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what, you know, some of the youth culture is is an influence. So firstly, just what's your opinion on that? And also, what do you think some of the solutions are to this issue, I think sometimes what we don't hear too much of mm-hmm. is young people's voice in this stuff. Mm-hmm. So you've got a lot of adults, or not even adults, just older people just talking. And I find myself in these situations where I don't actually hear a voice of a young person. If someone's 25, mm-hmm. what do you think are some of the solutions to this issue? So the whole thing about music and that, that's like saying rock goes and make you go and take drugs and that, like music, does, it doesn't, like we've always had different styles of music and you can't put a genre of music to the reason why people go and do something like that. That doesn't even make logical sense. Um, with the solutions, I, can't have, I don't even feel like I can sit here and talk about solutions kind of thing because I think, yeah, I'm not one of those individuals like that's doing it. So if I, a lot of people are out here talking about all this stuff, but they're not the ones in it. So like, I don't think it's my place, honestly, to yeah. say w- the solution because I don't know why every single person who's a part of it mm. is a part of it. Yeah. Like, I think it will be a bit, I'll just be talking out of my bum just for the <laughs> sake, like just, yeah. just, just to say something. I don't think it's my place to say, yeah, the solution to this is this because 
my solution might be the solution for one person, but not everyone. So yeah, yeah, like, which is refreshing. Yeah, because I think what I found, and I've never said that I'm an expert in yeah. anything. I've worked with young people for almost mm. 20 years. I've worked in different guises, but to call yourself an expert in something like this is not something I really yeah, want yeah. to tag. Um, and that, so that is refreshing what you're saying. I suppose what I can see mm -hmm. is here's somebody who at 25 is a role model mm -hmm. to lots. You've developed a lane for yourself mm -hmm. where you've, you've already said, yeah, you know what, there's no barriers, mm -hmm. there's no boundaries. Do you think there's something, whether you take an institution like schools, do you think there's something there where people like yourself, as you said, young people from who's grown up in the area mm -hmm. who are doing really well, do you find yourself being invited into schools to kind of, and that, so you just, yeah. so that's odd. Yeah, no, so like, maybe that's something like, including that, bringing them tangible role models, maybe, because I feel like growing up, well, I, okay, this is something I can't speak on, growing up, the people you look up to within our culture, whether rappers, footballers, let's say the shotters, um, you wouldn't look up to them, but like doctors and that, because your mum told you to be one. But mm. what was cool and making money were those three things that I said. Yeah. So even things like being a black businessman, like that wasn't ever shown to us. Or let's say, a black businessman who looks or dresses how they want. Like, that wasn't shown to us. So I guess maybe just showing all the avenues you can go down and, like, yeah. actually putting a conscious effort to try and yeah. show that. And show that, yeah, they can, let's say, make money from it or you can still speak how you want or still talk how you... Yeah, like... Because that's the point. I mean, is, is the money thing... Yeah, the money... Root, is that the root of it all? No, nah, I... God knows what the root of it all is. I just know, um, again, for myself, growing up, what was cool. It was cool to be a roadman when you was growing up. Like, all the girls wanted bad boys and that. Like, it was cool. But I that's what I'm saying. I'm not, I don't know the, re the specific reason, yeah. but I do know that, let's say, showing tangible role models mm -hmm. or giving people access to tangible role models can help guide someone's life. And in your own business, are you, are you conscious of that? So you're kind of saying, yep, yeah. if there were role models, business people who looked and dressed like me, I might have got into this earlier or I might have at least had inspiration mm -hmm. earlier on. Here you are now, mm -hmm. young black businessman, mm -hmm. dressing how you want to dress, mm -hmm. talking how you, Are you conscious of that? responsibility? Do you feel there's a responsibility or you're just like, I'm just living my life? Or like, do you feel that more of yourself and even with myself, mm -hmm. yes, I'm older, but there's not many black CEOs of mm -hmm. charities in this field. Yeah. So I'm conscious that when I walk into particular spaces, um, I'm still a minority. Mm -hmm. Are you conscious of that or are you, do you feel like, you know what, I've got a responsibility to bring the next generation through? Um, how do you operate in those white dominating spaces, which sometimes can be problematic for young black entrepreneurs? Um, to be honest, I'd just be myself, yeah. to be honest. Um, I think when I didn't have a platform or something, going into them type of spaces were kind of scary. Like, let's say, if I was looking for work placement or stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But now I just see things on value and if I'm in this room, I must have value. So it doesn't matter what your skin color is or et cetera, et cetera. Like we're all in this one room. Mm. If you're providing value, I'm providing value and that's the basis. So I don't really, yeah, I'm, I'll talk to anyone. And the way, I speak, the way I speak now is the way I speak on stage, is the way I speak when I speak to CEOs. It's like, I don't, I don't care. I think if I'm trying to be at my best performance at all times, I need to be myself at all times. Because if I'm trying to be something else, like I'm gonna be thinking about that while I'm trying to yeah. perform. And I'm like, nah. So for me to be at my best, I have to be myself at all times. So I think that's how I've navigated. And I've, I think for myself, it's, it's helped me because I know people can tell when things are authentic and yeah. can tell when things are fake. So for me, yeah. Like, and does that level of confidence just come from 
you know, you working stuff out? Or do you have, like, networks around you to support and uh, encourage you? Or? I, think, I think practice. Yeah. I think the more you, like, follow your intuition, the stronger it gets and stuff, innit? So I've tried it so many times. So even me, like, having a business after university, I worked at Tesco for, like, four months, and then I just left, like didn't have money saved or nothing, I just left kind of thing. So even that was my intuition. How did your parents feel about that though? Because obviously, um, where, 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 what's your heritage? Sierra Leone. Okay, mm. so, you know, well, you're, obviously you've said you've had, your dad is a, is a businessman mm. and stuff, so when you did that, were they like, yeah, cool, with him gone? Um, <laughs> was it like... My dad, my dad, um, he just wanted me to finish uni. And he saw I was doing this guap thing, but I don't know if he saw it as a business, but then he saw how much I was into it. And yeah, he, did, he didn't really say nothing. Yeah. Um, but I don't live with my dad anyway, so hmm. yeah, he couldn't really say anything anyway. Sure. Um, my mum, my mum was just worried, kind of thing, like how are you gonna make money, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I just had to like sweet talk her <laughs> and just to make sure I do what I'm doing, in it. Like, yeah. I think your parent, the whole parent thing, they're only gonna doubt you if you doubt yourself. Like if if you are hundred percent sure and you are doing it, yeah. Like what can they say? Kind yeah. of thing. And like, that and that would be my experience as well. Yeah. I think, yeah. My parents, particularly my mum, has always been like, okay. Yeah. Gone. You know. Get your education first, but, do but don't you, do what you're doing. Do like if if you yeah. if you show the slightest of doubt in what you're doing, yeah. oh, I'm not too sure. Blah blah blah. Then yeah, they're gonna worry. But if like they see you're working on something every day. They're seeing like the little progress, etc. Yeah. They're not seeing you. Maybe I think maybe when I first started, I was a bit stressed and stuff. But they see you're working on something. Yeah. Then, and just on your business, because it feels like you're everywhere. Mm -hmm. Four years, and you were like, were you South America somewhere recently? Or was um, it? No, um, where did I go? Ghana. Ghana. Okay. Yeah, Ghana. Um, so it feels like business is taking you all over the yeah. world and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, what type of stuff we, are you engaging in because of the business? I mean, the fact that you get taken going to Ghana, is that just to expand the business worldwide? Is that something, what's, what's, without trying to give your secrets away, yeah. honestly, but what's your future plans? What are you thinking? How, how big can this be? How big do you want it to be? Yeah, I just want it, I want it to be the worldwide voice for like creative youth, yeah. especially from like underrepresented backgrounds. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you just want to continue building different platforms and have that like, real infrastructure in that like, creative culture. What does that mean, real infrastructure? So like, I feel like a lot of the times when we talk about, let's say the industries and stuff, people aspire to be in front, like front facing. So want to be the rapper or want to be the footballer or want to be the the start, like be the person who everyone sees. But people don't realize that the real money and the real wealth is built when you actually have like the people, the beh when you're the person behind the scenes, like let's say you're not the artist, you're the label, or you're not the, you're not the person on the podcast, you're the person who owns the podcast company, like the people who own- The own, yeah, ownership. The, yeah, ownership, yeah. own the infrastructure they're the ones who really are impacting the culture. So it's like just having real, like I said, real infrastructure within the creative culture. So things like having our podcast studio, things like having yes. spaces and venues and all that kind of stuff, that's owned by us. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're right, because um, longevity, mm. and that is the thing, we can get into a lot of hype, so I see a lot of stuff with a lot of people with you know, particularly material things which you might see on social mm. media, but if you still, it's not even a problem living yeah, with your yeah. mum, it's cool, but yeah. if that's not the person you're putting out Yeah, there, no, it's like, I think people, people don't do their research. And people, <laughs> no, I think people think, let's say, let's say someone like Drake, mm. people think Drake is so rich, but the person behind Drake is even richer. richer. Like, that's the thing, and people would want to be Drake because of all the limelight, et cetera, but not knowing that, like, let's say, the label that Drake signed to yeah. is making 
the majority of the money. So it's interesting what you say here, because obviously, you know, we're talking about culture yeah. and what is presented to the culture around mm -hmm. us. So I've always got this thing about black excellence. Mm -hmm. It's a term which we hear. No problem, mm -hmm. but it depends what levels you're talking about, what black excellence. If black excellence is, let's say, Beyonce and Jay-Z, mm -hmm. well, 0.0% .0 of people are going to be, be like that. Like that. Mm -hmm. But yet, a vast majority of people will put this persona out. So something's not quite right, is mm -hmm. it, where we're saying, oh, you know, and that black excellence or materialism can be on a level which has got nothing to do with criminality, but a lot of the time when I do engage with young people or people, unfortunately, being in prison and whatever, somehow there's this, this mindset that, yeah, I need to have X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. and I will do anything for it. So how do we, how we change that narrative? I th I, that's the thing. I don't think, if I'm honest, I think a lot of these things are internal. So I think until people go into themselves and teach themselves, mm. like, I don't think much will happen. I think people have to want to change or want to learn or want to be better in different ways. Like, yeah. I don't, it's like, it's the same thing with like motivation. I don't think you can motivate anyone. I think people, if, if someone wants to do something, they're going to do it. If they don't want to do it, they're not going to do it. No matter how much words you say to them kind yeah. of thing. So I think maybe trying to tap into that subconscious mind at a very, very early age where they're mm. starting to think about who they are from a very early age and like, giving them the right information. I don't like know. primary was, school? Yeah, maybe primary school and all that. Well, there's there's certain topics that are getting taught in primary school that weren't taught when I was in primary school now. So it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe they can fill it in in primary school if it's, if they see it as important. Yeah. Like, I think self-awareness and all that stuff probably should be taught a lot earlier because I think that's the thing. I think a lot of times people don't know themselves so they just follow what... Yeah what they think. I think your point earlier on is like, you know, what you get presented at a school level mm -hmm. is really important. I always use the arts as an example. Mm -hmm. Like I was rubbish and still remain rubbish at um, art in any shape or form in mm -hmm. terms of drawing and painting. But trust me, if someone had come in when I was at school and said to me, do you know what? The industry, the art industry, isn't just about it's about drawing. It's about drawing. Yeah. It's about marketing, it's about photography, mm. it's about graphics, you know, it's about diversity, it's about integration, mm. inclusivity, all this stuff. I would have been like, yeah, yeah, you know. And I think sometimes we get sold short on what? The, the School, schools are outdated, though, man. Gone. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, like a lot of the, st a lot of the stuff they're probably teaching kids or like, yeah, but, but a lot of the stuff they're teaching kids, one, nine times out of ten, you're not even going to use it in the real world. And two, they don't show the depth of what you can be yeah. kind of thing. Like, So let's say my little brother is, what, 15 now, mm -hmm. and I had to... My little brother wants to do animation, right. and I had to get that for him because his school couldn't get him that. Sure. Like, so yeah. they were going to just place him in a retail shop for work experience. So, so it's like, if he didn't have someone like me as an older brother, his dream of, oh yeah, I want to be an animator, could have got cut short because the school that's meant to help him be who he wants to be doesn't have access to that type of things. And so, but that's just like a one example, but think about how many other yeah. students could have potentially, let's say, oh, I want to be a, I want to work in advertising or I want to work in a theater, et cetera, et cetera because the school doesn't have access to it. Mm. It's cut short. And that is part of the problem, isn't it? And this is the reason why you've got voluntary organisations sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to, obviously, you can talk off screen how we can maybe do some mm. stuff together to, to bring that experience to young people in a way they're not really getting. Listen, I'm gonna, I want to close up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything else you might want to share or... Um. Or any Ah, thoughts. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> For I'm me, good. it's just good to have you. Yeah. And like, like genuinely, you know, I remember I started mentoring in your primary school back in 2004. 
So it's been a while and... That's a mad thing. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> but like I said, just to see you grow, uh, break the mould, mm. um, your organisation getting bigger and bigger and bigger, having the creativity and the, the power you've got, mm -hmm. it's just wonderful just to see. Thank you. And I'll just say keep going, man. No choice. Yeah, <laughs> keep going. Mm -hmm. But um, And more young people need to see examples of yourself mm -hmm. and, and your colleagues getting out of there. So, Ibrahim, respect. Thank you for man. having me. I nah. appreciate it so much. Come on, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>